Chippers. Wow. It's a very special place for me. This is where I grew up. We lived on the street, the next street over Alba Avenue. We stopped in that Sainsbury's and that Iceland's. I used to get my CDs and pick and mix sweets from that, which used to be Woolworths, is now about burnt down Poundland. Um, I used to get all my books from the library down there. And every Saturday, I used to serve bread and pastries and cakes to my fellow Chingforbians in that very grapes behind me. Yeah. And, you know, if I went back in a time machine and went in there and spoke to 16 year old Pfizer, I don't think she could have ever imagined this moment with all these people and the leader of the Labour Party. My mum, who unfortunately isn't around to witness this, um, she was struggling with her care. She couldn't get the social care she needed. She Every time she went to Whips Cross, she had to wait longer to be seen. And it was a real struggle. And at that time, despite that struggle, despite that struggle so many of us felt around this country, the choice, the political choices, was either austerity or austerity light. It was either doing something about plastic bags or cutting the welfare state. But a lot's changed since that then, five years ago. I've just come back from Labour Party conference and this week we had these big bold announcements. Wind farms and affordable housing and you know, a, a national education service. The reason, one of the biggest reasons that we have that bold policy now is due to a man that my husband and I affectionately refer to as Uncle Jez. <laughs> it's down to Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> He's given us a space to put humanity back into our politics and ambition back into our policy. So the warmest of welcome to the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, right. Jeremy Corbyn. Woo! Pfizer, thank you and thank you to everyone in Chingford Labour Party that's come out this morning to help on our campaigning and our door knocking. And thank you also to all those that have come from West Ham this morning to help as well. Because you're all extremely welcome here. I told Lynn Brown last night to give you a special welcome because, as you know, she cannot be here today. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to the staff at Greg's. Splendid coffee and a vegan sausage roll for me. Really nice company, paying proper wages. That's the kind of company we want. Yeah. Sadly, over there, there's a place that's closed down this week, yeah. it's Thomas Cook's. The yeah. staff in there are losing their jobs. And the loss of those jobs is devastating for all the individuals concerned and all those that lost their holidays as a result of it. Where was the government when people's jobs were under threat? Where was the government? when deregulation takes over and working class people lose their jobs and lose their livelihoods and their communities. A Labour government would have done it very, very differently. Our priority, our priority would be about saving jobs. We're at a very critical time in our history. Very critical time indeed. The behaviour of the Prime Minister in being found guilty by the Supreme Court of shutting down Parliament and forced to come back to Parliament is a major piece of historical news in this country yeah, yeah. in every way possible. What was his response when he got back to Parliament? Finally, was to spend a whole lot of time just shouting abuse, abuse at just about everybody. I said to him, democracy elects representatives to be in our Parliament to defend that democracy. The idea that you can set up a whole campaign of the people versus parliament. Sorry, pa 
Parliament is a representation of the people, we would stand by democracy within our society. to be held accountable to a democratic process. That, Boris Johnson, is how democracy works. Yes. And democracy was not given from above, it was won from below yes. by those that campaigned for the right to vote, those that got women the right to vote, those that did so much to change our society. And so, we will do absolutely everything we can to prevent a no-deal exit from the yeah, European yeah. Union on the 31st yeah, of October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are not going to allow the people of this country to be taken over a cliff edge, knowing full well that we damage medicine supplies, damage the food supply, damage jobs, and lead us straight into the arms of a Donald Trump-inspired free trade deal with the United States. We are simply not going there. Yeah. And when that no deal is off the table, and the government has finally accepted it must obey an act of parliament that was passed, yeah. then, straight into it, we will take them on in every town, every city, every street, every village, and have a general election so we can put an alternative point of view to the people of this country. Yeah. Including, including, of course, the right to decide on the future relationship with Europe and the Labour government that would write fairly, decently and give people a choice. A choice between a relationship and a choice between remain. But not no deal, not into the arms of Donald Trump, something sensible to bring people together. The whole point of our party, the whole point of our strategy has been to bring people together. This week we had our conference and uh, there were 13,000 people came to the Labour Party conference and another 5,000 came to the World Transform. Yeah. A massive demonstration of people's thirst for ideas, for knowledge and to campaign for a, a different and changed and better society. And I was proud to be there and proud to see the enthusiasm of our members. You won't hear about too much of that in the in the mass media, you won't hear too much about that, but we were there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. many of the announcements that Pfizer just mentioned are incredible. And by the way, and not by the way, century to everything, Pfizer is gonna be the best MP Chingford's ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Understand the community, understands the whole political process understand that this country cannot go on with the levels of division and poverty that we have at the present time. And so when we announced the Green New Deal, the Green New Deal, the Industrial Revolution, I got a message yesterday from AOC saying thanks very much for being a major party that stands up for the environment in the Western world. Thank you to her for that. Our way forward is to protect the environment, is to give people cleaner air, is people to give people decent public transport, but also create good quality, well-paid, skilled jobs all over the country, in areas that have seen no industrial investment, in some cases for 40 or 50 years. It's surely the right way forward, protect the planet and create good quality jobs at the same time. Because it can't be right that our children growing up alongside major roads and lose light capacity before they even get to school because of the foul air they're breathing. It can't be right. In Glasgow has the lowest life expectancy in Britain, partly as a result of the social condition, and so on, all around this country. Let's do things differently, protect the environment, enhance our biodiversity, plant trees in the way that Walter Price Council yeah. is doing, and at the same time, create those jobs. My message simply is, I want to leave the Labour government to provide our young people with hope, security and certainty that they will have a future and they will have a future in a society that cares for all, not just for the few. And so, it's issues of poverty that uh, face this country. We are the fifth richest country in the world. There is no need for anyone to live in poverty in this country. There is no need for anyone to be rough sleeping. There's no need for any child to go to school hungry. There's no need for people to have to go to food banks. There's no need for those in work, when they finish work, to have to go and find a food bank to get enough food to feed their families. And when the United Nations 
sends a rapporteur to Britain to look into issues of poverty and say the ethos of social security in the welfare state has been replaced by an ethos of a cold, uncaring society. Surely we should just stop and pause for a moment. The United Nations has condemned this country as creating an ethos of an uncaring and brutal society. Surely it's time for a change. So those levels of poverty have to be dealt with and we will absolutely determine to deal with it. Our social security system came from demands of radical people in the 19th century, the early 20th century, to bring about the idea of social security. We all pay in in order that everyone can get something out at the point they need. That was developed by the post-war Labour government with the National Health Service, with an all-encompassing welfare state that provided people with that security. I grew up with that security, that security of knowing you're not going to be destitute, that you will be housed, you will be fed, you will be educated, and you'll be expected to work and make your contribution to society. It's the welfare state ideal. It's been sliced apart, cut apart, and destroyed by a combination of low wages, expensive housing, housing insecurity, and cuts to our welfare state and all that goes with it. I was on the Parliamentary Committee in 1986 that examined the then 1986 Social Security Act. I hated that act, I hated everything that went with it. It was the start of the destruction of our social security system. And obviously I voted against it. It would be my pleasure and my pride to lead a Labour government that totally addresses social security from the point of view of the principle that a real society provides a real safety net for everybody. Yeah. I want to announce a number of things today to you. First of all, the Department of Work and Pension staff are wonderful people. I worked with many of them, I know many of them, and I work very closely with the PCS union. Nothing I say about our social security system or poverty in Britain is a criticism of them. It's a yeah. criticism of the MP for this constituency and all those other Tories that yeah. pressed through the universal credit and the system imposed with it. So, first off, we will change the name of the DWP to bring back social security, yeah. real security for people. Of course, doesn't do everything. But a policy strategy which starts from the principle of a real living wage of £10 an hour, starts from a principle of controlling housing costs and regulating the private rented sector, a principle that means everyone will be able to be better off and will ha have more security. And so, there's a number of things we will do leading up to scrapping universal credit First of all, we will end the capability for work assessment tests that go on and are so brutal to people in their lives and have led tragically to some people taking their own lives and committing suicide because they can't see any way forward. As a constituency MP, I sit with people going through the pain of being told they're capable for work when they're clearly not. This is perfect as a result of going into a terrible period of stress. This is a deliberate act of government policy. Yeah. Secondly, we will end the bedroom tax because yeah. it is unfair, yeah. unjust and wrong. And Thirdly, we will raise the SA by 30 pounds per week in order to give people something reasonable to try and survive on during the period of time. We will make the carers allowance the same as job seekers allowance and recognise that carers do an amazing job on behalf of those who they love for the good of the public people. Firstly, we will end the two child policy in benefit distribution. That will cut that over Where does it come from? Where's the mentality of 
you have a large family, do the third, fourth, fifth children, if it's a big family, have less value than numbers one and two? Because that's really what it's saying. So that two billion plus is actually two billion that's been taken out of the living costs and the values of the children of larger families. To me, that is simply immoral. It's yeah, got yeah. to go. We will end yeah, it in yeah. our policy. Yeah. Our government will do some other things as well. We will pay rent direct to landlords so that um, tenants don't get into a whole problem of trying to uh, survive and at the same time get into housing debt and housing arrears. And we will uh, end the sanctions regime as a whole and replace it with 5,000 benefit advisors coming into the DWP. The original social security legislation of the 1940s said it was the job of the Department of Social Security as it then was to help people and advise them on how they go about things for the future. The 1986 Act ended all that and took all that away and introduced the current atmosphere and regime that we've got. So it refers to us, it refers to the Labour Party, to do something very, very I was proud of our conference, proud of what we achieved. I'm alarmed at the way the Prime Minister is behaving. I'm alarmed at the divisions he's creating in our society. There's only one answer to that. The only answer to that is to recognise the life's chances and life standards of people and say that the insecurity that people have to live in at the present time, the high cost of living, the low wages, the insecure housing, the insecure work through zero hours contracts and short term contracts could be replaced with something very, very different. A Labour government that would bring about decency of work, would give people the opportunity and the hope that their views would be acknowledged at the workplace just as much as they are in society. And young people that go to the apprenticeship or go to college or go to university won't end up with decades of debt because they wanted to get an education. Does all this cost? Yes, it does. But the tax cuts the very wealthiest have had since 2010 have made this the most unequal society in Europe and the most divided society in Europe. And it's getting worse. The Labour government coming in as soon as we can possibly get it will start to change all that. By a fair taxation system, yes, the very richest will pay more in tax because I think they should. I think they should make a greater contribution. Let the rest of the benefit. There's nothing more wasteful of a society than forcing people to live in poverty. Living in poverty means obviously you're short of money, obviously you're short of food, obviously you have no security in life. And for those children from the poorest families, achievements in school are much more difficult because they can't afford all the other things the other parents can. So we'll have a properly funded education system as well, that the head teachers don't have to raise money to run the school and get the school in the country. And that the family of education will be brought back into local education authorities through a national education service. We have so much to say, so much to do, and so much to offer. We will not achieve it unless we as a party and a movement are totally united in that determination. Taylor, that we go out there and engage in that debate, that conversation with people in order to ask them to lend us their support, to win an election, to deliver all those things. I am utterly determined to do that. I've only been to 85 of the 93 marginal constituencies so far. I'll be at the others very, very soon. And we'll be at all those constituencies very, very soon. Our campaign goes across the whole country. Every town, every city, every village, there will be Labour activists there in that general election. But here today, we're in Chingford. Here today, we're with Pfizer. Here today in Chingford, we're going to go out there talking to people, knocking on those doors, and we're going to get her elected that's the best thing!
hospital to hear Jeremy say these things. My mum, she had heart failure and she was one of the people that were reassessed for her disability benefits. And I was at home that day when it happened. And the indignity, it was, it was just like, I just will never forget my mum's voice just saying, I don't want to be sick, I want to work. And to have someone that understands how difficult it's been for people. And the possibility of real change. Hope is such a powerful emotion. Let's go. 